Thank you. Boston Fed President Eric Rosengren announcing uh, individually here that he will sell all the individual stocks he owns by September 30th, 30th and reinvest the proceeds into diversified index funds or cash savings. Uh, he says he will not trade in accounts while he's ser- in those accounts while serving as Fed president of Boston. He says the investment decisions he made last year were permissible under the Fed ethics rules, but he's addressing this issue to avoid any appearance of conflict. Obviously, this story uh, comes after uh, disclosures that Robert Kaplan, the Dallas Fed president, was involved in <clears throat> pardon me, multiple uh, trades in excess of a million dollars. Uh, over the course of 2020. And uh, Boston Fed President Eric Rosengren also involved in a series of trades uh, involving a whole matter of, of, of stocks, uh, Dow, Alibaba, it looks like, uh, AT&T. He owned a bunch of residential uh, mortgage companies and other mortgage companies, uh, Verizon. Most of his trades, however, are much smaller than Robert Kaplan's, all listed between 1000 and 50000 But there were at least, I'm looking at the form now, uh, 50 purchases and sales of stocks during the year. 50 transactions during one year. Um, Steve, I- I'm just curious. You you interview Fed officials all the time, and, and during the Jackson Hole Symposium, you talk to all of them. Did it ever occur to you to ask them what they held in their portfolio and what they trade? Uh, they come out as uh, uh, disclosures every year in, in the forums, Melissa, and it's not something we often uh, ask them about. It becomes a a matter more, more we talk about policy and the economy, but uh, it appears that uh, they have been doing quite a bit of trading, and it's now, I think, an issue. Yeah, certainly is. Steve, thanks so much. Steve Leisman. I asked that question of Steve sort of tongue-in-cheek because we always ask about the taper yeah. timeline, et cetera, and those things are keys to the kingdom in some sense, Tim, when it comes to trading stocks, particularly some of the stocks that they are trading in, like an Alibaba, like the tech stocks, et cetera. Yeah, I mean, and how about, you know, real estate or interest rate sensitive stuff? I mean, you know, if you're a Fed official, you're going to tell me you don't have an insight into where we are going in interest rate sensitivity. Um, The real cynics would say um, if he's now going to go to cash, it's time to see the Fed get a lot more aggressive and everyone else should be very concerned. I'm not saying that that's what's going on. But if I hear a Fed official saying I'll go to cash right now, Again, I think this is a function of him saying, I'll do whatever is the what's the most appropriate thing. But he's acknowledging um, what has come out in the last 48 hours. And we talked about this on Tuesday evening. And I, I think I think we would all agree that a lot of different uh, federal officials and even the members of, of Congress that have so much insight into policy that will move stocks top down or bottom up need to be regulated. And the irony is, of course, that uh, individuals are are regulated that much more without that kind of information. I'm really curious as to when these rules were put in place, because the world has changed with quantitative easing, Guy, and with the flow of information that we we have at our fingertips at any one moment that impacts stocks on a second-to-second basis. Um, It could be a case that the rules just haven't caught up with where we are in time. Yeah, it could be. But, you know, rules notwithstanding, these guys and gals, and again, just my opinion, they should have been smart enough to understand the optics around this are just awful. And we talked about it Tuesday night. And by the way, I'd like to think, you know, in some small part, you know, some single digit percentage, maybe the things we've talked about over the last two days uh, helped spur this on. So he's the first. I'm definitely sure he's not going to be the last. And it should filter its way into the members of Congress as well, because You know, people at home get agitated, exercised, mad, angry, whatever word you want to use, and you understand why they do. They look at this and they say, the game is rigged. Uh, It's the the big guys, the guys and gals that have all the knowledge and the power positions that benefit the most. And whether that's true or not doesn't matter. That's what it looks like. So I guess at some level, good for him for making this announcement. Yeah, and you brought that up when we were talking to Sheila Bear yesterday. I mean, when you're talking about leveling the playing field and the perception that the playing field is not level in the first place, Karen, this really adds fuel to the fire. If you say these these guys have inside information in some way, whether or not this is true, have inside information, have some sort of inside you know, direction as to where things are headed, the system is going, and we're the little guy left on the sideline. Yeah, I think it. the little guy should be upset about it because they do have access to this information. They And they, they make this information. 
not only do they know what it's going to be, they help craft it, right? So that, I think he's doing the right thing. I don't think there's necessarily anything to read into that there was anything inappropriate. I also think he's doing the right thing by going into ETFs, which it sounded like what was going to happen, not just going into cash, because that may send a <laughs> signal that is warranted or not, as Tim brought up. I don't know. So he's doing the right thing. They're trying to get ahead of it. But I think for, for Congress, it's more important, right? I, I just, the idea that there isn't any kind of regulation on trading there is that kind of surprising to me. So, and, and the idea for, that they, they represent the people. Congress represents yeah. the people, and yet they can have they can have a you know a committee hearing on something that could directly impact a stock or sector, and still be able to 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 trade in those shares. Um, Dan, I don't know about you. I hope that every Fed official that has holdings, even if it is above board, and it's all above board, that they divest. Yeah. So let me tell you who will. The Fed officials will do it. The congressional people, both parties, will not. They make their own rules, and this is a rule that they seem to be pretty happy about. And if they were concerned with the optics that Karen and and uh, Guy and uh, Tim just mentioned, then they would do it themselves, but they probably are not going to do that. And I think I made the point the other night that if you work at a large financial institution or many different institutions that have a fiduciary responsibility to stakeholders in one way, you have so many restrictions on how you can trade and what you can trade and holding periods and that sort of thing. It makes absolutely no sense. I'm less concerned about the Fed. I just think there's a few players there. I think it's Congress is a bigger issue. Issue and the senators, and we saw some of those senators from Georgia and some of the trading they were doing, and even, you know, related to Pelosi and, and some of her family members. It all just seems a bit goofy to me. Yeah. Um, Steve is actually back on the phone. He's got more on the story. Steve? Yeah. Uh, who is it who was just saying that others will follow suit? Uh, we just got a statement from the Dallas Federal Reserve saying that Fed President, uh, Dallas Fed President Robert Kaplan will divest himself of his individual stocks. Uh, so all of his stocks, I'm reading this now, right now, live, uh, that he owns by September 30th, reinvest the proceeds in diversified index funds or cash savings. Uh, this very much is reading like Rosengren's uh, release as well. Further, there will be no trading in these accounts as long as I'm serving as president of the Dallas Fed. So it appears as if uh, now two people have followed suit with the, pretty much the same language and adopted what appears to be a new policy for Fed presidents not to own individual stocks and not to trade while they're uh, uh, sitting in their positions as Fed presidents, the bank presidents. Two, two Fed presidents down. How many more to go, Steve? Uh, let's see. There are 12 <laughs> Fed bank presidents uh, just yeah. by way of uh, Arcana. The Federal Reserve governors are governed by the U.S. Office of Government Ethics. They file disclosures separately, and their uh, trades are, are um, uh, reviewed by the U.S. by that by that office. Um, they have other disclosures. I've looked at nearly all of them. Most of these guys have most of their funds in uh, in index funds and other sort of some private uh, equity investments. But uh, Kaplan uh, was the leader in terms of number of individual stocks he owned. Uh, Rosengren also uh, ha had a lot. But Kaplan, of course, has a fortune uh, given his uh, tenure as vice chairman of Goldman Sachs that is I believe, way larger than all of the other uh, Fed bank presidents and governors. Yeah, his, his position sizes were, were quite sizable as well. Um, Steve, thanks so much for bringing us the latest on this story, Guy. It seems like um, maybe this is just going to happen on its own without rule changes, but it would be nice to see rule changes. <laughs> No, it would, listen, I don't, yes, it would be great to see rule changes. And Dan's 100% right. I mean, it should f make its way. By the way, I thought there were rules governing, con I guess I was wrong. I mean, maybe I missed that day at college. But, you know, it's comical to think that that goes on. And, and actually, that's the wrong word. It's really upsetting to think that get, that goes on when there are a lot of people trying to do things the right way. So, yes, I just said it 10 minutes ago. He's the first and won't be the last. Well, that proved to be somewhat prescient, although not that... Uh, groundbreaking, but now it's just got to filter its way through the government because, again, when people see this, read it, hear it, they just like, you know what, this game is rigged, and you understand, again, why people get so agitated.